What we want to look at here is that once we create a basic shape in Illustrator, we um, want to, of course, manipulate it and uh, probably change it in many different ways. So what we have to do is look at some other tools and um, we want to focus on the two selection or arrow tools as we have them and notice that um, they um, are different that the uh, first one is the black arrow and that um, the second one is the white arrow think of the black arrow as being filled in and complete and the white arrow as being hollow or empty and not as complete I say that because I think it's a, a way of helping um, it helped me to uh, get a handle on what the difference is in terms of what the tools do and so um, uh, that was one way that I learned um, once we create a shape we tend to want to uh, start manipulating the individual anchor points or parts of it so that we can change and modify the shape and so um, uh, with these two arrows we do that and um, first the black arrow the complete um, tool. It does essentially three things. One is if I put it or click it in the middle of a shape, um, it will move that shape around the page. <clears throat> if I bring this um, tool to the edge of the graphic, you can see it turns into a double-headed arrow and I can use that to enlarge or reduce the graphic. Also, if I move it a little bit different place here, you see it turns into a double-headed arrow with a curve. Well, this is the rotation tool, okay? So, this tool's basic functions generally are to uh, move the entire shape around the page, to change its size, or to rotate the object. And that's what we can do very easily um, with the black arrow. The white arrow, on the other hand, is used to manipulate the individual anchor points. Um, also, um, before I go any further, we typically um, need to um, activate part or all of an object to do something, and then we will often want to um, deactivate or deselect the image and so if I click anywhere around an object um, with either of the arrows it's going to deselect it and we can see that we see the little blue line in the corner dots click off of the object those go away click on the object and we see them again so with the white arrow um, we can um, do as we did with the black arrow, put it right in the middle and move the object around. That is the same. But beyond that, what is different is we use this tool to activate individual anchor points or parts of an object so that we can move it and customize it or modify it. Now, notice uh, this little action with the arrow, the white arrow. When I click and drag, I have this little dotted line that you see popping up. And so generally what we want to do is we want to drag this around, almost like lassoing um, a portion of the object. And notice I'm specifically just um, grabbing or uh, lassoing the corner. And um, what that's going to do is it is going to activate this anchor point. Notice this act this anchor point is solid blue. It's completely activated. And if I move down to one of the others, notice it's still hollow. It's only partially activated, the little white dots, okay? And so the areas that we activate fully, like this corner, we can then click and drag, and notice that's the only part of the shape that is moving or is changing. The rest of the shape has stayed uh, right where it was. And 
uh, I can uh, actually activate several anchor points. For instance, I'll do both of these. Look, again, click and drag, sort of like lassoing it. I grab that end and I can simply pull and notice that both corners are moving, but these other two corners have stayed exactly in the same place. So that's the difference between having part of it completely activated and part of the shape uh, not activated, okay? So um, that's pretty much how we do that. I think we mentioned before about how with the tools we have in the corner here, um, the little black triangle, which is our indicator that there are other similar tools hidden behind um, this tool, um, and they, or they might be similar in function. And um, if, in fact, we want this little tab with these other tools to sit out on our desktop, we can do that by simply dragging our cursor out to the very tip. See that, how it turned gray? And it's called a tear-off, and when I let go, it will cause it to stay on the screen or I can come back and I can close it and collapse it. So there you have it. Um, another thing that I want to show you is um, how we can make uh, fairly complex shapes fairly easily and quickly once you get a handle on this idea of working with the different tools. And um, uh, I'm going to show you the heart and um, this is one of the things I like to show it quickly. We'll let you see what is possible. And um, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Not a rectangle, I'm sorry. <laughs> An oval. And uh, we're going to, let's say, um, let's give that thing, make it look like a heart. And uh, we'll make the stroke black. There we are. And um, I'm going to use uh, a new tool uh, that's hidden behind this pen tool here. And it's called the Convert Direction Tool. Convert Direction Tool. And it does two things. It turns angles into curves and curves into angles and it makes the handlebars on um, the um, curves independent. So this is one of the things that uh, we'll be learning how to do. Uh, let me show you very quickly. Um, I'm going to make my point right here. I'm going to make my handlebars independent. Go back to my white arrow. is my humps. I will rotate this around. And there you see. And of course we can modify this and tune it up and make it look even better. But I think you get the point that we can very quickly with a couple of these tools start to create fairly complex shapes. Um, another thing that you have to get used to it, um, is for instance when we um, let's say use the oval tool, um, we will make a shape and then in our mind we will want to manipulate it. And so uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to um, to the fact that you have to switch over to the arrow tools um, to do any of those kinds of manipulations. Um, there's a tendency to um, create a shape, let's say, with this or with one of the other tools and then um, we tend to want to use the same tool again to manipulate um, the shape and of course that doesn't work. In this case it creates another shape. So you have to get used to once we create a shape we manipulate our shapes primarily by sticking with the arrow tools. Okay.